Causes of cardiac arrest can be cardiac or non-cardiac. And when we consider the cardiac causes, the AHA has a nice way of categorizing the cardiac causes. Primary ischemic, primary structural, and primary electrical. Let's see where the H's and T's fit into this model, because some fit into it and some don't. You've got thrombosis coronary as primary ischemic and thrombosis pulmonary as primary structural. Tamponade goes into structural as well. Toxins go into primary electrical. And hyper or hypokalemia and other metabolic causes go into primary electrical. But some causes listed here are not included in the H's and T's like some structural causes such as cardiomyopathies and congenital issues like anomalous coronary arteries and inherited electrical disorders like Brugada and Wolf-Parkinson-White. And we even have blunt myocardial injury here in the form of commotio cordis, which we'll come back to. Let's consider the H's and T's in the non-cardiac causes. They include T for tension pneumothorax, H for hypovolemia, we're pointing to somewhere in the abdomen there because we could be bleeding. And hypothermia. But there are other non-cardiac causes of arrest, like intracranial hemorrhage. In particular, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now, to be fair to the resuscitation organizations, the point of the H's and T's is to identify reversible causes. So you can see why something like intracranial hemorrhage is not included. But these causes are still important. For example, there are many examples of patients who are in arrest or post-arrest going to cath lab who have had massive intracranial bleeds. If we'd considered this, it might have saved a trip to the cath lab and potentially prevented anticoagulant and antiplatelet medications being given.